Okay, so here's the rundown of the boat. So, uh, like you saw on the ad, it's the Catch Power 100 by Pelican. Um, pretty solid little boat, it's done me well. Um, so up here in the front, we have a 100 amp hour lithium battery. Uh, I started with a, a AGM battery, like a lead acid, but it was so heavy, it was just a pain in the butt. It made the, the nose of the boat dip into every wake or uh, roller you hit. So I would highly recommend doing the lithium for the weight and the battery life. This one seems to be serving me really well so, so uh, far. It's amper time, about 300 bucks. So I have this wired um, for the uh, fish finder. I just use quick connects, um, much easier. You can also use it to charge really easily. Um, for the trolling motor, I tried to put those on, did not work at all. Um, it was just too much and it was singeing the quick connect. So you need to run those wires directly um, to the terminals. All right, so continuing, um, right here is the uh, stock uh, little, it's like access to the hole, but it's also a little dry bag. It doesn't actually stay that dry. I found moisture in it just about every time I've opened it. So like my boat registration is about all I keep in there and it's in a Ziploc bag. So uh, coming back, I have strapped on um, some, what is the brand? Tournament, something, it's, I'll send you all the, the brand names for all this stuff. But it's a uh, pretty long paddle. It's got the nice little hooks in case you need to reach down the water or up in a tree to get your lure out. Um, but it's really important to have some sort of paddle in case that battery dies and you're not just, you know, at the will of the wind. Um, so here I have a rail blazer, rail blazer action boom, which is really nice to have an action camera to take selfies. Um, I tried to start taking selfies of fish with my can with my phone, just was not working. So highly recommended in any kayak to have that. Continuing, um, so over here. Um, you know, the nice thing about this boat, it has rails all over it that come stock. I've added a couple, but these up in the these ones up in the front, and then the rails built into the handles come stock. Um, so here I have, just have an extra rod holder. It doesn't have any rod holders in the front, and this is convenient. I mostly use it actually just to uh, keep the net out of my way while I'm trolling. Um, I haven't put it on yet. I uh, forgot to before the video, but uh, that is my mount for the Striker 4 by Garmin, the fish finder. Um, this comes stock with it. Um, however, I got this and this adapter for a rail um, by Ram mount, I think. It's really nice because you can adjust it all around real easy with just a turn of that knob right there. All right, so coming back here, um, so it comes stock with uh, four rod holders, which is really nice, and it actually works out uh, really, really nicely for trolling. Um, so when it comes to trolling, I have the Scotty Lake Troller hand crank downrigger. Um, thing is awesome. I initially tried to mount it on a rail, um, so that I could troll facing forward. That just doesn't work. It just, it's too much weight and it breaks the mount for the rail. Um, so this is what comes stock with it. So I epoxied it, drilled drilled holes and screwed it in. It has worked great that way. Um, I replaced the wire that came on it with a 200 pound braid. The wire, uh, the downside to it is it's just so noisy and obnoxious as it goes through the water. So highly recommend doing that. Um, I use a four pound weight. You could probably get away with lighter, but it works pretty well. The rod and reel setup that I uh, sold with this boat, um, it's a bait caster. I use an Abu Garcia uh, Ambassador. Um, the really important part is I use this kokanee rod, which is super, super, super light. It's like almost as light as a uh, um, fly fishing rod. And the reason that's really important is that fishing this really light downrigger, you need a really flexible rod to bend over correctly. Okay, some other things. Um, I use a Minn Kota 55 pound trolling motor, um, five forward speeds, three reverse speeds. That equals about two and a half horsepower, which is what this is rated for maximum. Personally, I'd be pretty comfortable putting a three, three and a half horsepower on it. Um, uh, particularly a gas one. Gas would just extend your range so much in this thing, especially if you had a little more horsepower. Um, so one thing I did recently is the uh, stock port for the um, electric that is ran up here from the front through the hole. 
um, back here to the plug that thing shorted out on me a couple of times and I was not able to fix it. I would just, if you buy one of these, replace it straight out of the gate with one of these Marine Co. Uh, plugs that are rated up to like uh, 48 volts. So it'll absolutely um, do so much better than what comes on it. All right, last couple of things that I did to this thing. Um, you can see I have a little extender rod for the trolling motor. That is nice when you're trolling backwards. You can kind of put your feet back and steer from further away. Um, the seat in this thing slides forward and back, turns 360. So it's nice to have um, the capability um, to, you know, actually control the motor from further forward. You could also, like, kind of lean back in the seat and pull the motor up tire. And uh, the... the uh, the actual um, extension will come over your head and you kind of actually face forward and still steer it, which is one of the challenges with this boat. Um, the other things, let's see. Really the only other thing is how I routed the um, transducer for the fish finder. So my fish finder sits up here on this rail. I can move it around as needed uh, depending on how I have the seat oriented. But the transducer is actually underneath of course rather than putting it in the hole which you could do and put it with duck seal in the hole i actually used duck seal and i i balled that duck seal up around that transducer and shoved it up into that hole and actually pulled on that cord and it sucked up in there now i was careful to make sure that uh that duck seal kind of was already in the shape of the hole underneath and once i pulled it and it sucked it tight and it was sitting real nice and flat you know um parallel to water level um, then I actually shoved in that plug and once I shoved that plug in it has actually never come out so it's so it's routed from up there down to here sucked up in there and then that plug has just lived like that uh, I was worried it was going to come out dry up and fall out but uh it has worked wonderfully so um really highly recommend doing that all right so a little video on the fish finder the Garmin Strike 4, Striker 4 maybe. Um, so this is your home screen. I really probably don't use this to uh, the level I could, but really the basic function of it is pretty good. As you can see, really clearly see fish, anything else down the bottom tells you miles per hour. Uh, you know, it gives you your charge here, um, your time, and then the water temperature at the surface where the transducer is. Um, as you can see, it's about 3.8 miles per hour. That's uh, 4, 4.5 or something. Or not 4.5, 4.05 is about as uh, fast as you're going to go. Um, here's the action camera on the boom. It's really nice. Uh, I use the DJI Action Osmo or Osmo Action. Anyway, it's nice because it's got a front-facing camera. If you get up real close to it, maybe you can see that. Hard to see with the light. Um, but that front-facing camera is nice so you can frame yourself and get good fish pictures. That's what my profile picture is on Facebook. Um, it also is really nice that this one is voice activated, so you can hold your uh, fish, say take photo, or you can say, uh, you know, start filming, for example, like it just did when it heard me say that. Um, and it'll act, so you get fish on both hands or on the rod, you say, you know, start filming, it starts. And then you can say stop filming, and it stops. <laughs> All right, last video I'll do. Um, so I've got my downrigger set on this side. Um, that bend in the rod, you won't get that without a really light rod and this light uh, lace tackle set up with a, with a smaller weight um, and also, you know, um, just, just a light tackle set up. Um, so yeah, you definitely want that kokanee rod or if you can find it some sort of similar really light rod, um, that set up is perfect, honestly, in my opinion. Um, on this side, I'm actually running two rods. I'm running a jointed Rapala uh, on the top uh, on my spinning rods, so um, super easy to run two rods as I have it set up, or you can have two downriggers on here.